We're here in the centre of town and we're going to be exploring the corridors of a building which has a fascinating history. One, in fact, which started in the early 1800s. The City Hall behind me houses the Mayor's Parlour and the Mario Filinson National Art Gallery. And this is where our focus lies today, on Gibraltar's art and its art history. We're going to be featuring some of those treasures that form part of the Gibraltar Government Art Collection. We'll be joined by some interesting guests as well, who have their own fascinating story to tell too. Paulette, lovely to have you here Hello. with us today. Obviously, we're standing in a building in the National Gallery, which takes the name of your dad. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that uh, Mario really campaigned to have the National Gallery, and it was something that uh, finally came to fruition back mm -hmm. in 2015. He was obviously very proud of that. So for yourself to be standing here, obviously, a few months you know, after he passed away, I mean, how are you feeling at the moment? No doubt bittersweet. Uh, very proud because um, he achieved his lifelong ambition of having a national gallery, which was one of the poignant thing in his, in his rebellion, rebellious self. So that's uh, amazing. Um, and obviously we have this lovely heritage and we can always look back on his lovely work together with his other um, former mentors and, and artists as well. So it's, I think it's a privilege to be here. I think with Mario, I mean, such a prolific artist, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a man who dedicated his whole life to, to his passion, to, to his art. Later in the year, we are going to be changing things around. So mm -hmm. he's going to be taking more of a prominent uh, position, perhaps in this gallery, and we'll be able to bring out some of the work we have as well in yes. the archives uh, and, and showing that because that's Lovely. what it's about really. Mm -hmm. So so let's take a walk because this is um, the idea that we're having to, to bring art to people at home at the moment. So Paulette, just coming here to appreciate some of your dad's earlier works, you were telling me these uh, particular sketches, the one in charcoal, were done when you were about six or seven, is that that's, right? That's right. And um, that's when he went to the Slave School of Art. So that for him was a, a, another very important milestone in his life because he'd achieved actually going to study art, which is something he'd longed for all his uh, younger life. Um, and these are the studies of um, nudes and still lives in the actual state school of art. And these serve as sketches to a then later work in actual oils and obviously a bigger size as how, well. How much of an impact would you say this time in the UK actually had uh, for him, perhaps uh, being exposed to other artists uh, and, 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 and different styles and so on? Uh, well, he, he was under the tuition of Frank Arbuck and Peter Prendergast, so for him those names were names that he had read about and then, you know, lo and behold, he was actually in a tutorial or in a class with these artists so that for him was like unbelievable um, and obviously being in London and visiting galleries which he did f always you know we kept maybe going back to the National Gallery again and again I remember my mum saying we're here again <laughs> and he, she didn't understand that we could revisit and restudy and re uh, connect with whatever he was doing at, at the present time, whether he was studying more Matisse or Cezanne or, or Picasso and delving really deeply into all of that study. From these uh, sketches to then his more abstract work, which mm -hmm. always had that sort of cubist element, which we can see in some of his later paintings, wouldn't you say? I think also um, because I, I don't know whether all Gibraltarians feel this, that because we come from a sport, small place, we are maybe not good enough or so we measure ourselves against people outside Gibraltar and he I think at this moment was doubting his skill mm. and was doubting himself as an artist and was he good enough and how he was going to uh, progress so that was another important um, transition as an artist when he gained confidence and belief because 
the other people around him were also in the same predicament and they're all learning at the same time and he always said, you know, I'm, I'm never going to stop learning, I'm, I'm always painting, I'm always delving and that's something that I think made him one of a, a true artist in that sense because he never think, thought he had arrived. Did your lives, creative lives, run in parallel, would you say? Uh, well, we were always having discussions, obviously he was a big influence because he supported me wholeheartedly when I said could I become a dancer, <laughs> could I go to study, which in 1979 was unheard of as mm. well in Gibraltar. Nowadays I'm, I'm happy to say that everybody's dancing and everybody's uh, creative, so uh, he was obviously a big, big influence musically as well. Every Sunday we used to come back from Mass and, and listen to music, so that was another important uh, phase because I uh, maybe my friends wouldn't listen to classical music mm. or or different music even jazz or so he had an array of, of of that knowledge as well so in the art center I would go early to do my own class and training and he would be painting and then we would have say 11:30 we'll have to have a coffee and we would both discuss what we had been doing and discuss philosophy, discuss ideas, why are we here, mm -hmm. <laughs> what are we doing. So that was a very, very close um, bond that I had with him, apart from being my dad. A beautiful relationship there, no doubt. Now, if we can move to this painting over here, because you talked there about mood, mm -hmm. and I think this painting certainly encapsulates, uh, you know, a certain mood, the, the evening light in the bay, which is the title of this piece, uh, mm -hmm. dated 1978. Already we're seeing here the rooftops, which was, you know, very much the trademark uh, of, of Mario and his painting. We've seen them perhaps being, um, you know, depicted in so many different ways. But here there's something very much atmospheric, you mm -hmm. know, with the light and, and the way that we're seeing, you know, the clouds and that reflection on the sea. Do you remember your dad actually working on this one? Um, he, he worked on, on this view many, many times because it was the actual view of my grandmother's, my mum's mother, uh, Terrace and Lavadero, which he, it became his art studio. Mm. So um, he lived in Flat Bastion Road and my mum lived just there opposite the uh, Sacred Heart. So this was a poignant view because it's a view that he would see almost every day when he went up to, to paint. So I think it, it reflects maybe what he would be thinking, maybe what he would be yearning for, um, the iconic cathedral, the, you can see the, the lavanderias there as well and the, ha the clothes hanging, which was very typ typical of our lifestyle. Exactly. So I think it, it, it shows, and our beautiful bay, of course, um, so I think that maybe he was reflecting on that mood of maybe traveling again because this was in 1978. Mm -hmm. In 1979 is when he then did uh, an in service a year uh, out in Goldsmiths College. So maybe he was already thinking that he needed to re study or, or revisit um, and be around other artists to study. I think it was skill pre um, sk uh, silk spring printing and um, other genres that he was teaching the girls at A-level. And Paulette, I've got to pick up on one point there. In fact, uh, both uh, yourself and your dad shared um, some time in the UK at the same uh, university. So how <laughs> interesting for you both. Yes, uh, when, when I wanted to maybe spread my wings <laughs> and have my own checkbook and my independence, um, dad got an in-service course at Goldsmiths College and Laban, which is where I went to, Laban, which is now Trinity Laban, um, was affiliated to Goldsmiths College. So whilst he was doing his uh, research, I was in my first year studying dance. So we used to meet at the refectory and people were like, you're meeting your father and he was, you're meeting your daughter, which was very unusual, but very fun as well. Um, so we shared that year even like in the same <laughs> college or university so that was quite special. 
And Paulette, would you say perhaps uh, there was an evident change in your dad's work after that year in the UK? I mean, you also mentioned their music once again. So how much would you say this played a part in uh, sort of his creative process? Um, I think he became more involved in figurative painting and also printing uh, because he was uh, studying techniques in terms of music uh, because we were in London and, and I was fortunate to be there with him. Um, we went to a lot of operas, we went to a lot of ballets, we availed ourselves of the opportunity of going to see so much theatre. Um, obviously in terms of finance it was difficult but at that uh, stage we didn't want to miss any opportunity, mm -hmm. so I was also inst instructed by him in terms of visiting galleries, of uh, going to Cork Street, going to other places who, which I would have never done had I not been there with him at the same time. Let's go and have a look at some of his later work. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favourites. Mm -hmm. It's one of the works that always stands out when we're doing the, the school tours. The children seem to like it. I think the fact uh, that there's such contrasting shades and uh, we can see so many of Gibraltar's landmarks. I think that's one of the things yes. that are really prominent. Obviously, we've got the, the cathedral there, the Moorish castle, the, the rock itself, the green shutters. And I think we, we sussed out that was the, the facade of the, the yes, Theatre Royal. I think so, <laughs> because, you know, he was, again, all also passionate about that building and historically in his childhood. His, actually, his great-grandfather was the, the person that played the piano when the silent films were on. Wow. So, so know, another the, link the, there the as well. The music goes back um, to our family. I think it's, it's quite vibrant. Um, I think he's, he'd reached this, like, um, moment of, of like, not comfort, but like I think he was uh, being very bold with the colour contrast and using the, it almost seems to me like it's winter and summer at the same yes. time in the contrast. day and night, and not the cool night. with the warm shades, yes. definitely. The shutters, very iconic also to his, his childhood and to, to, to Gibraltar and in the sort of like Italian style architecture and influence. Um, the castle, as we said before, still the rooftops, still the soteas. Yes. Uh, um, so, would you say we're seeing a much more experimental nature here as well? Because I'm seeing sort of different elements and styles kind of coming through. See, because you, you can see of, of the like cubist element, but also the offset. And I think maybe a reason why maybe, as you said before, that children maybe enjoy it, it's because it's like looking at it when you're um, tiny and you're looking at it from the side, it, it may tilt to your own vision. So maybe that's what he was, uh, you know, looking at things from different perspectives and, and angles. And Paulette, something quite different in comparison. This one dates 2004 the studio and it's probably one of those still lives that uh, would have been created by by your father at uh, the art center even i can remember these kind of setups when i danced many many moons ago now yeah uh, see this would be in his um i mean he painted in different parts of the art center mm. but then he made this particular um space his uh, studio so this would be um, where he set up his still lives or this is actually a still life of his actual um, materials like his his, his um, brushes and then we still have that bust there um, and his tools so I think it's quite interesting because he's bringing like maybe what the artist uses mm. as materials in a work of art itself per se as, as well so maybe that's quite and I think in this Unusual. one, certainly a study of light, wouldn't you say? He's mm -hmm. really using the yes. actual objects and working with those right. shadows, the brightness, the yellow tones. Again, those golden and bluish tones, mm -hmm. which are quite um, evident in his work. If we go back yes. uh, to the light in the bay, we can see mm -hmm. it sort of being brought into, into a different subject matter. But uh, He was always um, delving into the, the idea of how light changes objects or landscapes. Uh, 
because he was all, um, also uh, a very good photographer, or also delved in photography. He had a little dark room in the old Loreto school when he was teaching there um, in the convent. So, you know, he, he was passionate about that as well. So al almost like a, a scientist as well. So mm. he, he was very, very uh, curious about everything and inquisitive about how things worked and how light, you know, in, even in design, in everything we do in theatre as well, uh, plays a big part. And interesting, I think, uh, to see here the drips of the mm -hmm. paint, you know, an effect that he's wanted uh, to leave in as well. Yes, I, I think uh, he got to a stage, you know, as you get older where your confidence mm. rises and, and you don't, you know, you know, oh, is this finished or uh, have I arrived at, because sometimes you never know if a painting is finished or, or not and, and you can spoil it or, or do too much and I think maybe at that stage he'd achieved maybe what he he wanted. He was very critical always of those things and and very well known for painting on top of paintings <laughs> and on the back of paintings because obviously material was expensive yes. so you know as, as he got older obviously he could afford more things but uh, in a lot of the works that we have in the art center there's pictures and paintings on both sides of canvases. canvases. And here we have two examples of rooftops depicted in, in very different ways, even though we can see the cubist element in both of them. If you can start off with the sepia rooftops, obviously the title telling us uh, very much the focus with regards to the colour, you know, mm -hmm. working with, with those tones, that palette. But uh, the depiction itself of those rooftops of those buildings, much more um, stripped back, Yes. going to basics, you know, simpler in its forms. I mean, in, it's simplistic in a way in the canvas, but I think in his mind to be able to then transpose the line and the specific line that would tell you this is another rooftop is, Much more the, complex. is the complexity. And obviously I think maybe he challenged himself into using a much smaller array of colour in the sepia. So that might have been uh, a task that he set himself and maybe still had the warmth of the, of the colours of, of our, our rooftops. And I think it actually works, that relationship mm -hmm. between the colours and uh, the form and the mm -hmm. composition working very well and uh, challenging the viewer as well, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, no doubt, again, bringing into play these shades, which would be very much commonplace in, you know, Gibraltar's traditional skyline if we yes, look at the, the upper absolutely. town and the old town and so mm -hmm. on. And still I think the, the idea of the light that we were talking yes. about before when he's putting the white or leaving the white as to draw us into the different shapes and offset the perspective and the different dimensions. And something quite different here, a south view, so a different part of Gibraltar, mm -hmm. which perhaps wasn't yeah. as common or didn't feature as commonly in your father's works, but uh, definitely an interesting uh, with, uh, you know, Roja Bay and Parsons Lodge. That's right. Yes, he, he was always looking at, at different ways of depicting his, his uh, love of Gibraltar. So, um, again, when I was talking about the photography, maybe he went up the rock, took this view and thought, maybe I can delve into something that he hadn't studied as much mm. as maybe the cathedral or the bay um, view. Um, and also we can see a completely different palette here and maybe almost a bit more subdued um, colour schemes to what I think maybe we were used to. So um, I, I suppose it does reflect maybe the mood he was in, in in that particular uh, moment, moment or, or yes. So Paulette, a big thank you for having you here today. For us, it's, it's a pleasure. And uh, you know, we hope this serves as a legacy towards mm -hmm. uh, your father's uh, work and passion and love of art throughout the years, because no doubt he's certainly left his mark on Gibraltar's artistic scene, not only through his offering and all those works he's leaving behind, but through his 
influences mm-hmm. and how he continues to influence and have an impact on artists working mm-hmm. at the moment. Absolutely. Yes, so thank you very much. It's been a pleasure and I hope people enjoy it.